Ryan Payne is with us, popular guest on this program. I don't know why, but he's popular. He's a young guy. That's probably it. Uh, That's we're all I have going for me. <laughs> all of us. All, okay. We're talking now about perception versus reality on the economy. Um, the perception, is, and I want you to knock this down if, if that's what you want to do. Yes. The perception is that the manufacturing sector is weak and weakening. That is the perception. Tell me the reality. 10% of the private sector is actually employed by manufacturing. You know, it's such a small portion of the economy that it's really irrelevant. But is it expanding? Um, well, We're told it's it has... weakening. I mean, weakening the uh, manufacturing sector. Is it yeah. not weakening? Well, more importantly, it is weakening a little bit. But more importantly, the service sector, which drives the economy, has been going up and up and up, you know, consistently. And we're a service-based economy. So that's the real numbers you want to look at. So, but if it, look, if manufacturing is, what, 10% of the economy, a very important part, why is there a perception that it's not worth much or that it's, not, it's going downhill or something? Where's that perception come from? I think it makes great headlines, if we had to be blunt uh, about it. That's it? That's about it. I mean, because if you think about it, I mean, right now the economy is in great shape and all you can look at when you Google or you go online is recession, recession, recession. Yeah, that's another one. I want to yeah. nail that one. The, okay. the perception is, because you hear this word recession all the time, the perception is that the economy is slowing and that's where we're headed, headed to a recession. What do you think is the reality? Okay, so the reality there is it's not really slowing. If you look at last year, we had this big jump in GDP because that was because we had this tax break, right? And that was an artificial stimulus. Now, if you look at the last 10 years, the GDP has averaged 2.3% a year. Guess where GDP is going to come in this year? Estimated. 2.3? Bingo. Exactly right. So we're getting normal growth that we've had for the last decade. Nothing's really changed. That's not really slowing. That's what's been normal. But we always hear that sooner or later, there has to be a recession because there always is. And that is true. That sure. is true. But when do you think we get this, uh, this recession? Well, what I worry about is I think the perception is it's happening sooner than later, and that's what everyone's focused in on. But I think what we discount right now, and I've talked about this a lot, is remember, the GDP or the, uh, the country is basically driven by the consumer. And the consumer right now is probably in some of the best shape they've ever been, Stuart, and that could drive the economy for a very, very long time. And I talk about this a lot, but the consumer right now, too, is not as leveraged as they used to be. Americans are actually saving again, which is shocking, but Americans are actually not as leveraged as they used to be, and that's huge. I do find that fascinating. It is fascinating. It's not instant and total yeah. consumption all the time. The savings rate is about 8%, isn't it? I know. It's insane. Uh, if you think about it, I mean, it's just such a polar, it's, it's polar opposite of where we were a decade ago. And I think because of that, because you don't have that overheating, it's going to be very hard to go into a recession. Here's another one. The yes. perception is that a long, drawn-out trade war with China will set our economy reeling. That is the perception. That's what you hear all the time. Yes. Reality? Okay, so reality is, I mean, if you look at exports, they're down like less than 1% this year. It's a very small percentage of GDP. Furthermore, you know, companies are smart. They're not just sitting there saying they're going to slap these tariffs on us. We're not going to do anything. You know, number one, you have to look at, uh, like, take American Eagle, for instance. It's a retailer. You and I probably don't shop there, but the teenagers love it. Right. <laughs> so basically, that 10% uh, tariff would take their profits down by 13%. However... Okay, a couple of things they're doing right now. Number one, you had the yuan has been devalued, so that offsets some of the tariff right there. So the goods are a little bit cheaper that they're importing in. They're starting to diversify their supply chain. 30% comes from China now. They're going to bring it down to like 20% over the course of the next year or two. So they're doing that as well. Um, in addition to that, you know, they're also looking at renegotiating with their suppliers, saying, hey, you've got to suffer this as well. I've got one problem with China trade. Okay. I think there has been a specific response on the part of business not investing in new capital equipment. That reinvestment of all the money they've made, yes. the reinvestment into capital equipment, uh, capital expenditures, that is slowing down. And I think that is the result of China trade problems. So I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Go ahead. So imagine we get some sort of trade deal where things ease up a little bit and that capital expenditure on top of strong GDP from the consumer kicks in. We could be off to the races. Again, what I've talked about a lot is that market could be off to the races because the numbers are going to come in a well, lot better than expected. An intermediate deal would put us off to the races because you Absolutely. don't have to settle the theft of intellectual property or the forced conversion of technology. You don't have to deal with that. But if you had a short-term deal on tariffs and agricultural products, then you've got yourself a short-term deal. And I think you're right. I think the market would respond. Stuart, we speak the same language. I'm with you.
well, with a different accent, we do it. <laughs> Brian, thank you very much indeed, sir. We appreciate you always being thank here. Thank you, my man. Thank you.